Our spiritual paranormal experiences are this is. This as if you are now with spiritual and paranormal experiences. Oh, I didn't hear the word with. Okay. And you are now with the psychic couple. I'm Jen. I'm Chuck. And this is Fairies and Gnomes. This is our first part of our cryptozoology series. No, it's not. Sasquatch was the first one. Oh, okay. Well, then it's... Then our third it's, part. Uh, our, our third part of the series. We got a series called Cryptozoology Series. And, you know, we're going to do fairies and gnomes. And Brought to you by the Society of Spiritual and Paranormal Research. Yes. And the air date for this show will be on February 11th. 2022 and I have a Why do you do that? A big, big, Why do you big, do that? Big they won't hear this until it's announced. Big, 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 big announcement. Stop, please. Happy Stop. birthday Stop. to you. Oh, Happy geez. birthday to you. You're killing the audience. The, the love of my life oh, turned rain. 50. You didn't just say Lordy, that. Lordy, Lordy. She's 50. You just lost our audience. <laughs> and going on with spiritual and paranormal experiences. Oh, and by the way, I do sing every Thursday night at 9 o'clock. No, I'm just joking. Oh, God help us. As Spiritual Paranormal Experiences is brought to you by the Society for Spiritual and Paranormal Research. Our website is www.cbezio.com. You can also use the hashtags SSPR, hashtag CBEZIO, hashtag www.cbezioCOM. Join the SSPR conversation on our Facebook page and Facebook group. Coming up on this episode, do you have a soul? Parents want high school principal fired. What mythological creature is an earth elemental? What mythological creature is considered a spirit of nature? My girlfriend keeps pushing me to get married. Oh, sounds interesting. And without further ado, we are going to do what? The Tools of Protection brought to you by the Church of Love and Light and our minister, Charles Bazile. Chuck. Chuck. I go by Chuck. Okay, I want everybody... You go by whatever I call you. That's what oh, you go by. Oh, 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 and right I, now, I can't say I, that on the air after I what set, you just did. I set the tone for today's show, I think. Yes. Okay, so I want everybody to have happy thoughts. <laughs> positive thoughts. Glorious, wonderful thoughts from the divine. Oh, Lord... Please bring these tools of protection to all of us. Please surround us with the white light of the Holy Spirit. Surround us with the golden ring of love and fill it with the green flowing healing energies. Please surround us with a double-sided mirror that repels all negative energy and allows only positive, influential energies to flow freely. Please use as a shield for protection Asna, sword for defense. I love you, my Lord, God, and Jesus, and Asna. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Oh, I am your minister. I am Chuck. We are from the Church of Love and Light. It's a non-denominational church. Get off your pedestal. Okay, and we are on our Facebook. This is brought to you by the Church of Love and Light and Minister Chuck. I guess I set the tone by singing. Is that what that was? Who knew that music would bring such set the tone? Glory. You could carry a tone if it had a handle on it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's moving on. Yes, the prayers and moving blessings. Moving on. Prayers and blessings are brought to you by Minister Jen. Are you going to sing a hymn today? No, I'm not singing. Oh, are you going to do a prayer? I'm going to do the prayer. Okay, well, it's prayers and blessings. So I bless you for your birthday. Thank you. All right. Everybody, please close your eyes. 
and take a deep cleansing breath and listen to the sound of my voice. Thank you for your great love and blessings. Oh, sorry, dear God, thank you for your great love and blessings over our lives. Thank you that your favor, patience, and grace has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. Please forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you are intimately acquainted with all of our ways. Know our faults and that you know what concerns us and you take us into your mighty arms to protect us only as our Heavenly Father can. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Guess Prayers what? and blessings are brought to you by the church. I right don't know night. what I've been told. Someone here is getting old. Will you stop Someone it? here is getting old. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Come on, let's stay on topic. Paranormal uh, news. 13 famous people who believe in aliens. I'm one of them. Are we alone in the universe? Uh, well. <laughs> well, no, we're not. You're here. Oh. It's a question that humanity has long grappled with, but while astronomers, astronomers continue to scan the cosmos for signs of alien life, imaginations are free to run wild here on Earth. From pop stars to Hollywood, actors to politicians, here are 13 famous people who believe in aliens. And if you would like to read the entire article, you can always go to our Live website. Live science. Yes. No, uh, no, 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 no. Why you cut me off? It is paranormalnews.org. The article from Live Science oh, is, on is there. posted. We are not Live Science. No. That's a whole other website. But it comes from Live Science. Yes, this, this article comes from Live Science. But Paranormal News has this article posted. Does yourself have a soul? No, this is just idiotic. Of course we have souls. Okay, your, do you, yourself. Now, do plants? Yes. Insects? Yes. Rocks? No. Well, depending on what type of rock? Depending on what type of rock, yes. Okay. See, hey, that took a long time of really, really educating a rock in order to get her to understand that. Hey! Oh! Moving on. Okay. Boy, this is really I'll stop being beat fresh. on me, huh? Well, you know, you know. I saved this episode for your birthday. It's all about your favorite gnomes! Oh, dear Lord. Oh. <laughs> you like You know, fish. I should have ragged on you when it came to possessed <coughs> things. When it was what? Possessed things. Oh, you did. You sent me a psychic attack. It lasted um, 32 years and counting. I did not send you no psychic attack. <laughs> Though the soul is for <coughs> out of favor, it's far out of favor with most contemporary philosophers, a new distinguished scholar defend the scrutinized, defend and scrutinized the idea of a self that is founded on the soul at that, and extends beyond the physical that could survive after the body dies. And again, that the rest of that uh, it's story been posted to is our, on www.cbezio.com. That's our main website or paranormalnews.org. And I would like to introduce a new name for our pug puppies who decides to join us every single time we decide to do a show, whether it be live, which is recorded live, and then it is aired on a particular date. So we don't do any type of editing or anything else like that, or Jennifer would have chopped me out of this whole episode. But you're right. The psychic pups, Suki Lee and Melody Marie, have decided to join the audience today. And they like to chime right in every time we're on a show. So the next thing is spooky top 10 unexplained phenomenon. Science is powerful, but there is much it can't explain. It can't explain my wife. Can't explain it can't Julie explain either. how she, she has I have 50 years of experience now, oh, so just... Oh, Lord help me, God. I yes. Know. And you're not far behind me, Mr. 49. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're born in the same year, you whoa, idiot. Whoa, 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 whoa. And you know what she's going to do? She's going to quietly let that pass. I'll never hear nothing. Oh, you I don't think have so. a number that gets oh, stuck in my head. Oh, you think so. I don't get stuck on... 
See, my birthday represents... You get stuck. Oh, you get stuck. You're stuck on it now. No. Birthday to me You're stuck on represent me. a celebration of my parents for bringing the glorious life that you have before you. Oh, dear Lord. It's a celebration for my parents. Just like we celebrate It's a Joseph celebration and of Mary. your narcissism. We celebrate Joseph and Mary with the birth of Christ. So we celebrate my parents on my birthday. Science is powerful, but there's much it can't explain. And when people see, hear, or believe something that it is that is not explained, science finds itself trying to prove things don't exist. And that's truly impossible. In the following pages, you'll learn more about some of the most common inexplicable phenomenon from ghosts to supposed man-like beasts, from incredible experiences at the line between life and death to amazing but unexplained feats of mind itself. How much of this is real? We'll let you decide. And this can be found on paranormalnews.org and it is from Live Science. The If you are interested in any of the articles that we talked about during Paranormal News, um, you could go, just go right to our website at paranormalnews.org or... You know, I might just go and read that article. Yeah, yeah interesting. C-B-E-Z-I-O dot com. And we'll be back right after these messages. Our sponsors for the Tools of, Tools of Protection was from the Psychic Discoverer, and that's psychicdiscoverer.com or hashtag... I thought it was from the Church of Love and Light. The sponsor. Sponsor, oh. you're interrupting my commercial, not brought to you by. Oh. The sponsor, there's difference, the sponsors, the ones that make us money. Yeah. Oh, okay. We don't make any money. You want to donate to the Church of Love and Light, go right ahead. You're already deep in my pockets. Uh, okay, so the sponsor for the Tools of Protection is the Psychic Discoverer at PsychicDiscoverer.com. Hashtag Psychic Discoverer. There's a Facebook page and Facebook group. Ministers and psychics, Chuck and Jen, are the Psychic Discoverer. Explore the realities of spiritual and paranormal paranormal realm with the psychic discoverer Learn to talk. at the psychic discoverer.com and guess what the tools of protection is brought to you by the church of love and light minister chuck and jen oh okay and you you did know that okay and the website is www.cbezio.com wow going on to the next one real quick sponsors for prayers and blessings uh, there's a Facebook group called Prayer Request. You go right to it, Prayer Request. All of these links will be posted on this page when this show is posted. And a Facebook group called Prayer Requests Daily Blessings. Those are brought to you by the Church of Love and Light. Ministers Chuck and Jen would love to have you join us in our church. It's a non-denominational church. And we are at the Church of Love and Light. Introducing a new way to add your name to a prayer chain. We have a prayer request. As long as you believe form. in a higher power, you're welcome. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. Even if you want to explore if you do believe or you don't believe. It won't make you believe. I promise you that. <laughs> will make you believe. Some people think I have the power of hypnosis. I have no power over anybody, not even myself. My power comes from the divine. Yes. And the only thing I am capable of doing is bringing out what is in your own soul yourself. That's yeah. it. Period. Relaying the message. If it's within you, on your spiritual journey, you will find it. Yes. I agree wholeheartedly. Next Moving segment is on, called Spiritual, Spiritual Moments. Moments. Christian nurse barred from wearing cross necklace wins lawsuit. Good. When it comes to medical safety and expression of religion, where is the line? That's the question an employment tribunal in the UK had to answer in a recent hearing. The case involved 61-year-old Mary Ahanaho, a devout Catholic, who has worn the same cross necklace every day of her life since her baptism. And you could finish that. On our um, 
uh, Spiritual Moments Facebook page. It's at Spiritual Moments. And Spiritual Moments is brought to you by the Church of Love and Light. And that's also from the monastery. I do have a little story I want to um, add. Uh, not that I was a nurse, but one day um, I was in the hospital. Jennifer was in the hospital. And one nurse had come in and she had noticed my opal ring. I wear rings. I wear gems. I wear precious metals and gold. And... Um, and she complimented me on my opal ring and um, how how nice it was. Which one? Huh? My 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 opal the ring. The square one. Yeah, my original opal ring. Yeah, my, yeah. It's too big for me now that I've lost all my weight, but um, I still wear it. Yeah. Well, I don't know now. You've lost a lot of weight yourself. Yeah. But, um. Uh, and so she complimented me and a little while later she came back in and I guess she had realized that I wasn't wearing just one ring I was wearing a bunch of rings and on my other hand was the ring that me and Jennifer had gotten for each other Jennifer wore one she the wasn't, pentagram. She wasn't uh, wearing it at the time and because she was in the hospital but I was wearing mine and she turned ghost white and took a step back and looked at me and said, oh, you're devil worshipers. Because I was wearing a pentagram. The power of the star of the light that Jesus brings to me encircled by his protection. It's a ring. It's not devil worshiping. It's not witchcraft. It's not... It was almost as if I was draining her soul out of her body because she saw a she ring didn't understand. on my hand. Um, some people really just can go too far with um, superstition and symbology and misunderstanding. And I did this to myself, being a father and not understanding what goth meant. And thinking that it meant devil worshiping. And I've had many um, mind opening events in my life. But this will occur in your journey, in your spiritual journey. Did you know journey. the swastika is an ancient Indian symbol? Yes, it is. Before it is. that, um, the. A ancient, ancient um, Indian. Uh, now, when you say Indian, you mean from India, not Native Americans or indigenous people. They are from uh, in Indian, and it's a religious sign. And Hitler liked it, turned it on the side a little bit. And, yeah, he made it backwards. And, yeah, and uh, actually he believed in the power of the sign, but he wanted the, the dark side of the sign. That's why he turned it backwards. Yeah, and symbology is important. It does represent things, but you really need to understand before you pass judgment and passing judgment on others without un without understanding. Now, if I turned around and said, yes, we are devil worshippers. Why, you got a problem with it? You want to sell me your soul or something? Um, yeah, I can understand if she, um, her her soul leapt and, and was running to the divine light of the Holy Spirit. But, did she ever come back in the room? Uh, she did. But she just was never the same, not as friendly and as nice as, and yeah, no. And that was my first example. The reason did why. Did you I, explain it to her? I did. I did. I said, this is uh, the, the star, uh, it's five pointed star. Uh, the star is symbolic in, in the Christian and Jewish religions. And a star is um, the light of the divine and it's encircled with a circle of protection. This is a pentagram and you need to understand what a pentagram means in order to pass judgment. And you don't understand what it means, so you shouldn't pass judgment. It was a lesson on judgment. Texas lawmaker wants Bible to be official state book. <laughs> Can a religious text be endorsed by the government? One Texas lawmaker thinks so. Texas State Representative Glenn Rogers recently introduced a resolution to make the Bible the official state book of Texas. 
The resolution follows the footsteps of Tennessee, Louisiana, and Mississippi, where similar resolutions have been introduced in recent years. What do you think? Shut it? <clears throat> I don't see why not. It's the most widely reproduced book. Red book. Red book in all of the world. In public, well, currently, today, all, and, and always. There's I mean, never been a book. It's bigger than a thesaurus. It's bigger than the Webster Dictionary. It's bigger than any other book rewritten or put in every language everywhere in the entire world. And up until recently, um, it's it been was used, the most it's read been thing. Used for schools. Uh, it's most it's been used thing. to teach people how to read. It's been the most accessed <coughs> material in the world until TikTok came around. Moving on. <laughs> this is this is um, a, another article that's been posted to our Facebook page. Spiritual moments. Campus preacher assaulted over woman. Women be belong in the kitchen sign. Oh, oh, oh. Now, this is an interesting one. Women belong in the kitchen sign. And he's a preacher. I think I've read this article before. Yeah, we discussed it prior. I was wondering if we should actually have a sermon on this. About how women, they they need to know. It goes on to say, in, in a, a little bit of a spoiler here. All a woman needs is a Bible and a good cookbook, and that's all they need, nothing else. Yeah, and you know that Bible and, and, and I cookbook added a little caveat, a little caveat. Upside your head. A little caveat. Yeah, I, I remember you saying that when we were in um, pre-production of this show, that you were going to say something like that. There's one more thing that a good wife needs, but we won't go there. This is a family-friendly show. You gonna read the article part that highlights the A controversial article? campus preacher ended up on the wrong side of a physical altercation <laughs> at the University of Alabama in Birmingham after a female student confronted him over a sign implying that a woman's place is in the kitchen, not in the classroom. Daniel Rusk, preacher at Walk About Jesus Ministries, was allegedly assaulted by a female student while holding a sign that reads, Young woman, you don't need college. You need faith, a Bible, and a good cookbook. The student presumably took offense to the message and attacked him. The incident which occurred on September 14th. Okay. This can be. This is on our Facebook page at Spiritual Moments. Uh, but, but this is important. How dare he? It's Middle Ages. All right, yes, I agree. And he was from the walkabout... Oh, Jesus, he should have just kept walking. Same with her. She crossed the line when she physically came in contact with something somebody else was doing that was offensive to her. Never, ever, 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 never, ever. Never result Do you cause violence. harm to yourself or someone else, period. Physical harm is a line that I will not cross. So... Up until the point where this girl hit him, he was wrong. She made him now the victim, which now, in my opinion... She should have made her own sign. Yes. Where he belongs. And, oh, we could have a big, long sign about that. Yeah. Um, but, we, yeah, like I said, family-friendly and moving on. Um, Parents want Metalhead High School principal fired. Metalhead? Is it a robot? Uh, is it virtual reality? No. Is it remote Are learning? Are you that old that you don't know is what a metalhead re is? Remote learning? No. Oh, I'm just doing mine. Can thing. you get fired for being too metal? A group of parents want to find out and are petitioning to remove their children's high school principal because she is reportedly a fan of the band Iron Maiden. A group of Ontario parents created a petition to have Sharon Burns removed from the, her role as principal at Eden High School, arguing that her love of metal and throwing up devil horns with her fingers, visible on her Instagram page, represents a satanic threat to the souls of their children. Oh, please. Uh, if she was in the classroom... Isn't, isn't devil horns also the sign of love and peace? No, that's love and peace. I don't, I don't actually know what this is. But um, nobody can see it. It's the thumb, it's the... Pinky. What? And pointer. It's the pointer and the pinky. 
it is the double horn in the thumb. Well, if you put out the thumb, it's love and peace. Well, I, I don't know what a, what. It, I think it's if you bring in the thumb, it's the devil horns. Yeah, well, in in this one, I guess I'm in a fresh mood. But if you, if, if this one's love and peace, then this it's one is in the, F and U. Um, isn't that uh, something in the alphabet? The uh, yeah, it's the letter Y. Y. Yes, sign language. Yes, the letter Y in the sign language, if anybody knows the letter Y. Spiritual Moments, the sponsor for Spiritual Moments, and we'll talk about this later on. But if you would like to become a sponsor on Spiritual Paranormal Experiences, you can contact us at any time, and you can become a, a sponsor of any one of our segments, whether it be the Spiritual Moment, whether it be Church of Love and Light. Whether it is paranormal news, and we haven't, we don't have a segment yet, but it there if will be. If you'd like be. to sponsor any of our programs or any of our, um, our or even websites. the live readings with the psychic couple, which we do Tuesday nights at seven o'clock. Yes, you can be sponsors of that. And if you'd like to be on one of our shows, just let us know. We'll do an interview with you. And interested in any of these articles, the articles are posted on our website at www.cbezio.com. Spiritual Moments is brought to you by... The Church of Love and Light and Ministers, Jen. And, um, um, I forgot, um, um, oh yeah, me, Chuck. <laughs> Today's show topic, Jennifer loves fairies, and she absolutely be no. Today's show's topic is brought to you by the Spiritual and Paranormal Experiences Facebook page at hashtag Spiritual and Paranormal Experiences. All right, a fairy, also fae, fae, fair folk or fairy is a type of mythical being or legendary creature found in the folklore of multiple European cultures, including Celtic, Slavic, Germany, Germanic, English, and French folklore, a form of spirit often described as metaphysical supernatural. A gnome is mythical, mythological creature and diminutive spirit in Renaissance magic and alchemy. First introduced by Periclesius in the 16th century and later adopted by more recent authors, including those of modern fan fantasy literature. Okay, just pause for one moment. And Kate, <coughs> I just want people to know that there's there's a point in, in our discussion here. In fairies are a lot older than gnomes. Oh, yes. And there is a lot about fairies. So we are just touching on fairies today. There will be a whole nother show that we will dedicate on to just show, or on to just fairies. Also... I'm gonna be going. Go, we're gonna be going back and forth, doing some information on fairies and then gnomes and fairies. There's not as many as much information um, regarding gnomes. That being said, we didn't really discuss or get your opinion about what I had said earlier about the the girl who attacked the guy with the t-shirt. <coughs> with you, the t-shirt. Yeah. With the uh, sign. With, or with the sign. Yeah. What attacked the priest with the sign. Yeah. She was wrong for physically attacking him. I said she should have gotten her own sign. Oh, yeah, you did. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. So, as I was saying, um, and back to our regularly scheduled program. The gnome's characteristics have been reinterpreted to suit the needs of various storytellers, but it is typically said to be a small humanoid that lives underground. Myths and stories about fairies do not have a single origin, but are rather a collection of folk beliefs from many sources. Various folk theories about the origins of fairies include casting them as early either demoted angels or demons in, Christ in a Christian tradition, as deities in pagan belief systems, as spirits of the dead, as prehistoric precursors to humans, or as spirits of nature. Spirits of nature. Remember I said coming up later on? Yeah. In our show? So what are spirits of nature? Gnomes and fairies. Uh, yes. Uh, just so I just But also of the woodlands. Yes. Well, we're going to get there. Because gnomes classified as an earth elemental. 
gnomes are known as very reluctant to interact with humans and able to move through solid earth as easily as humans move through air. Earth dwelling spirit has precedence in numerous ancient and medieval mythologies. After guarding mines and precious underground treasures, notably in Germanic dwarfs. The label of fairies has at times applied only to specific magical creatures with human appearance, magical powers, and a parchment for trickery. At other times, fairies has been used to describe any magical creatures such as goblins and gnomes. Fairy has at times been used as an ad adjective with a meaning equivalent to enchanted or magical. It is also used as a name for the place these beings come from, the land of fairy. The gnomes of Swiss, Swiss folklore follow this template, as they are said to have caused the landslide that destroyed the Swiss village of Pluris in 1618. The villagers had become wealthy from a local gold mine created by the gnomes who poured liquid gold down into a vein for the benefits of human and were corrupted by this newfound prosperity, which greatly offended the gnomes. This was in the gnomes book, L. Frank Brom Oz. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Going into the next part of um, what we're going to be talking about is gnomes in books. And there be gnomes in books. Did you know the um, the Oz people were gnomes? L. Frank Brahms' Oz series created in 1900 through 1914. The gnomes, spelled N-O-M-E-S, so spelled especially, their, and I just lost it, I got their it Their king are, are the chief advisories of the Oz people. They are ugly, hot-tempered, immortal, round-bodied with spindly legs and arms have long beards and wild hair, live underground, and are the militant protectors slash hoarders of jewels and precious metals. Wow. The militant protectors and hoarders of jewels and precious metals. Who does that sound like? Seven dwarfs. Huh? <coughs> Seven dwarfs. <coughs> You're not a hoarder of precious metals and jewels? Oh, stop it. Oh, Oh, no wonder she don't like gnomes. She don't like to look in the mirror. Oh, oh didn't go there. Oh, oh, sorry. Baum does not depict any female gnomes. Ruth Plumley Thompson, who continued the series in 1972 in your birth year. in your birth year oh. after Baum's death, reverted to the traditional spelling. A reoccurring legend about fairies is the need to ward off fairies using protective charms. Common examples of such charms include church bells, wearing clothing inside out. I've done that, oh wait, but just not on purpose. Four leaf clovers, looked for those, have you? Yep. Ever find one? Yep. Nope. And- I found a five leaf clover once. Oh, aren't you really special? Four leaf clover. Maybe people that are over the age of 50 and belong to the AARP club. Now, um, get it. Stop. Oh, oh, oh. Four leaf clovers and food. Fairies were also sometimes thought to haunt specific locations and to lead travelers astray using will o the whips Before the event of modern medicine, fairies were often blamed for sickness particularly tuberculosis and birth deformities. And in addition to the folklore origin, fairies were the common feature of Renaissance lecture. In, literature. What? Well, yes, uh, yeah, literature. And romantic... Rom romantic. Rom romantic art. That's what I said. Literature and romantic art. And were especially popular in the United Kingdom during the Victorian and Edward Edwardian eras. The Celtic Revival also saw fairies established as a can, canonical can part of the Celtic culture, cultural heritage. Gnomes books, L. Frank Baum also featured the classical gnomes in his book, The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. 
Gnomes are in charge of watching over the rocks and their king is part of the Council of Immortals. In addition, they also created the sleigh bells for Santa Claus reindeer. Gnome's books, J.R. Tolkien, in the legends created 1914 to 1973, surrounded, surrounding his elves, uses gnomes as initial, but later dropped the name of Noldor, the most gifted and technologically minded of his elvish races, in conscious exploitation of the similarity with the word gnomic. Gnome, in Tolkien's English loan translation of gnomes, those with knowledge, Tolkien's gnomes are generally tall, beautiful, dark-haired, light-skinned, immortal, and typically wise, but suffer from pride, tends towards violence, and have an overwhelming love of the work of their own hands, particularly gemstones. Many of them live in cities below ground or in secluded mountain fortresses. Tolkien uses gnomes to refer to both males and females. The Father of Christmas letters between 1920 and 1942, where Tolkien wrote for his children, red gnomes are presented as helpful creatures who come from Norway to the North Pole to assist Father Christmas and his elves in fighting the wicked goblin. In C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia, created in 1950 to 1956, the gnomes are sometimes called Earthmen. They live in the Underland, a series of caverns. Unlike the traditional, more human-like gnomes, they can have a wide variety of physical features and skin color. They are used as slaves by the Lady of the Green Kirtle, Kirtle until her defeat, at which point they return to their true home the much deeper and hotter underground realm of Bism. Still to come on this episode, the Paris of Persian mythology. Mythology creatures considered harmless but mischievous and might bite. Mythological creatures that are part of the Celtic revival cast, a part of Ireland's cultural heritage. Also how my wife, who just turned 50 years old, is considered um, a gnome. Stop. Oh. I'm not considered gnome, you it's troll. No, and so, oh, you call me a troll? The t- <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. The term fairy. Let's get on to fairies. How's that? Would All you right. be better in talking about fairies? Don't matter. Hi. The term fairy is sometimes used to describe oh, any magical creature, including, go- you. including goblins and gnomes, while other times the term describes only a specific type of eternal creature or sprite. Historic or historical origins of Will fairies range from various traditions from Persian mythology to European folklore, such as Bretons, Welch, Cornish, Gaelic, Irish, Scots, Manx, and Germanic Germanic people and the Middle French medieval romance. According to some historians, fairies were adopted from the influenced by the Paris of Persian mythology. Paris were angelic beings that were mentioned in antiquity in pre-Islamic Persia as early as Achaemenid Empire. What was uh, that? That was what? Achaemenid. Achaemenid. Was that Achaemenid? I kill you! Achaemenid. Achaemenid Empire. Achaemenid the terrorist? I kill you! You said that wasn't right to say stuff like that. Oh, that's not right. That yeah, is, no, you don't say stuff no, like no, that. No, no, but that's that's a comedian. It doesn't matter What's if it's name? a comedian. What's his name? I can't think of it right oh. now. He's the puppet guy. He's a skeleton. He's a. I know what he is. Oh, we love him. Why can't I think of him right now? Okay. Because we're in the middle of a show. Known book in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, created in 1997 to 2007. Gnomes are pests that inhabit the gardens of witches and wizards. Gnomes are small creatures with heads that look like potatoes on small, stubby bodies. Gnomes are generally considered harmless, but mischief, and may bite with sharp teeth. Ooh, they, they also bite. live in the homes. 
Yes, they may. Oh, a gnome in the home. Yes. Oh, we could talk about gnomes in the home. And in the books, thoughts. it is stated with it is stated that the Weasleys are tolerant to gnomes and patient to their presence, preferring to throw them out of the garden rather than more extreme measures. Oh, Bob has arrived. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bob, and I'm going to read oh, the next section of Garden Gnomes, Jennifer's most favorite thing to see during the summer season. Bob does not sound like that. Stop. No, oh, this is a new form of Bob. After World War II, with early reference and iconic use from the late 1930s, the diminutive figurines introduced as lawn ornaments during the 19th century came to be known as the Garden Gnomes. The image of the gnome changed further during the 1960s to 1970s when the first plastic garden gnomes were manufactured. These gnomes followed the style of the 1937 depiction of the Seven Dwarves, the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves by Disney. Now that's a dwarf, that's not a gnome. Aren't dwarves and gnomes and trolls and fairies and lions and tigers and bears, oh my, all different? Not necessarily. Oh. The Disneyfied image of the gnome was built upon the illustrated children's book classic, uh, the Secret Book of Gnomes, 1976, and the original Dutch leavened, leavened wheat working Van de Carbature. Oh, garden gnomes share a resemblance to the Scandinavian Swedish term tomate. Tomut? Tomut? Tomt. Tomt, which can be translated as gnome in English. Paris fairies were later described in various Persian works in great detail. A pair, a pair, Perry was illustrated to be fair, beautiful, and extravagant nature. Spirits that were supported by wings. Oh. Wings may be, may have potentially influenced migratory Germanic and Eurasian settlers into Europe or been transmitted during early exchanges. The similarities could also be attributed to a shared Proto-Indo-European mythology. In the Middle Ages, fairies are used adjectively, meaning enchanted, as in fairy knight or fairy queen. And I just completely lost. But also became a generic term for various enchanted creatures during the late Middle English period. Literature of the Elizabethan era became blended with elves, with the fairies of Romance culture, rendering these terms somewhat interchangeable. The modern concept of fairy, in the narrow sense, is unique to English folklore, later made little accordance with the current taste of the Victorian era, as in fairy tales for children. The Victorian era and Edwardian era saw a heightened increase of interest in fairies. The Celtic revival cast fairies as part of Ireland's cultural heritage. I'm back on track. No. Fascination no. of English antiqui antiquaries arose from a reaction to greater industrialization and loss of older folk ways. This is an interesting one. Gnome's book, L. Frank Brahms, also featured... Where are you? It's to be continued. Cryptozoology series, fairies, part two. Next in the cryptozoology series, Loch Ness and other sea monsters. Did we, we didn't do, um, we did, uh, I apparently am lost, but you talked about the, the life and adventures of Santa Claus. Yeah. And the gnomes are, I wanted to talk about the life and adventures of, ho, ho, ho. So talk about them. Okay. Bye, Bob. Bye. Bye, Bob. That's not Santa Claus. No. Ho, ho, ho. So there's several stories about Santa Claus's origin. Yes. One is that he's a gnome. One is that he's a human raised by gnomes. And and the mantle of of immortality was given to him by the, 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 uh, the, da, 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 da. what is it called? The, the, 
circle of immortals. Eternals. Eternals, yes. And we just watched on Disney Plus, and we are not. They're not a sponsor of our show, but Disney Plus could always sponsor our show if they would like. If they'd like to. We are a family-friendly show. Yeah. One time in 15 years, an accidental swear word by... It comes with age. Don't worry about it, honey. Shut up. Oh. I screwed up once. Once, 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 once. Okay. To be continued, cryptozoology series. I don't give a flying flurb. Flurb? What about a flying fairy? Fairies part two. And next on the cryptozoology series, we're going to be talking about Loch Ness and other sea monsters. I already which I know, but I wanted to mention that the other sea monsters, there's probably going to be a lot about that and a lot about the sea monsters. So there might have to be later on in the year, later on in the years as we go on with our show, we will update, especially when there's news that are coming in with a new spotting or, you know, uh, Loch Ness was found on the shores of just like the giant squid was. There's always something new. Yes. And intriguing. This is Spiritual and Paranormal Experience. Our website is www.cbezio.com. You can always go to our Facebook page. It's facebookpage.com backslash Spiritual and paranormal experiences, all one word. New episodes are posted on Fridays and our website and Facebook page. Yes, and hashtag spiritual and paranormal experiences, hashtag CBEZIO, hashtag www.CBEZIO. I said dot, huh? Hashtag www.CBEZIOCOM. And hashtag SSPR. Predictions and prophecies. Predictions and prophecies is brought to you by the second couple, me, Chuck, and Jen. Her, Jen. The psychic couple.com. That's all one word, psychic couple.com. Also use the hashtag psychic couple as Jennifer's getting her mojo down. Um, we give you a little taste of what we do every Tuesday. You never talked about Santa Claus like you said you were going to. No, Santa Claus is listening. He'll chime in when Santa Claus needs to chime in. No, you didn't say you were going to be Santa Claus or you were going to channel Santa Claus. You oh. said you wanted to talk about Santa Claus. I collect Santa Clauses. I like Santa Claus. He was a hero of mine when I grew up. He's a hero of mine today. And when somebody wants to debate... We actually did a show on St. Nicholas. You know, we've done a lot of shows on St. Nicholas. And they want to debate uh, an actual argument with a uh, school who turned around and told my sixth grader that uh, they didn't believe in Santa Claus because Santa Claus wasn't real. St. Nicholas never existed. Broke her heart. And when I turned around and threatened them with a lawsuit with a separation of church and state because St. Nicholas did exist and that you have no right to teach your religious beliefs to my child. She apologized to the entire class. That's all I wanted to say. Um, have you channeled your psychic mojo? Yes. Because Corey has been waiting a while. Yes. Corey. Oh, we do this live on Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, live psychic readings with the psychic couple, Chuck and Jen. We are on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Twitter Spaces. Check us out. Go right to our website at www.psychiccouple.com. Join us. You can listen in. One question. We need your name. We need your birth month, birthday, day. Not date, the date, just month and day. The city, the state, and if you're out of country, not the United States, then the country you're from. Okay, so Corey, born on September 9th from Erie, Pennsylvania. A friend of mine is cheating. I have been best friends with her boyfriend longer than her. Should I tell him? Will I lose either or both? As a friend. 
that comes from Corey. And we're going to be doing a special, or we did a special, which it will be now in the past, when by the time this airs, uh, Love is in the Air. Uh, um, all romance, but this is a uh, romance question. You want me to read it again? No. Tell him you'll lose her. Okay, tell, tell him. Oh, I get what you're saying. Tell, Corey, tell him and you you will lose her as a friend. Yes. Not Corey. Okay. Uh, and if I don't chime in, that means I totally agree with it. Um, with what Jennifer has um, gotten. And I definitely will chime in. At least in. you'll lose her for a while. Um, I she will, may come back. I will chime in if um, I get more or additional information. Because um, I don't know how to shut my mouth most of the time. So Herman. Uh, he's a Scorpion. Scorpio. Uh, born on November 9th. He's from Clinton, Massachusetts. My girlfriend keeps pushing me to get married. Oh, this is what this was. These are the our yeah. spiritual and paranormal experiences before Valentine's Day. Okay, Herman. I get it. I gotta put on my happy love smile for these. Another romance one. Relationship question. Herman, born on November 9th. He's from Clinton, Massachusetts. My girlfriend keeps pushing me to get married. Should I get married? Dun, 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 <coughs> dun, 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 dun. Herman, you need to figure out what's holding you back. That's my only concern. Money. Insecurity. Afraid of long-term commitment. Although you've been in a long-term commitment, you feel very secure. And, um, yeah. It's only yourself holding yourself back. And so, take the leap, boy. Dun, 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 dun. By I'd December. I'd say go for it. By December. By December. I hear wedding bells by December. Okay. The next one. Nathaniel. He is a Gemini. And he was born on June 20th. He's from Middleton, or Middleton, Middleton, Massachusetts. I am in love with my best friend. Should I act on my feelings? You should tell her, yes. Because she's feeling the same way and doesn't know how to tell you. Yes, I, I totally agree, uh, Nathaniel. And it'll be a long-term relationship for both of you. Yes, and she calls you Nate, and she is or Natty, going, and she's going to be um, very, very shocked and surprised to hear the exact same words that have been bouncing around in her skull since before they were bouncing around in your skull, coming out of your mouth. And you know what she's probably going to say? Why the hell did we wait too long? So long. Why did we wait so long? Just like I did with you. Yep. This has been Predictions and Prophecies. It's been brought to you by the Psychic Couple. Who's the Psychic Couple? Uh, me and you. No, Chuck and Jen. Is that really... www.psychiccouple.com That's psychiccouple.com You could always use the hashtag Psychic if I could talk, psychic couple. Hashtag psychic couple. Announcements. Did you get to join us for our live psychic readings with the psychic couple on Tuesdays from 7 p.m.? Live psychic readings with the psychic couple is on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Audio only. Sorry, black screen, no video yet. Live psychic readings with the psychic couple has a live. Um, call in number, it's voicemail, text message. 860-866-4793. And she cut me off. It also uses the WhatsApp or, or WhatsApp through Facebook. You can post your questions and comments using the hashtag Psychic Couple and hashtag Psychic Couple Live Readings. Or you can also post them at uh, Facebook.com Live. 
Yes. Any changes to the live psychic readings with the psychic couple will be posted on our psychic couple web page. We had to do uh, uh, an all of a sudden abrupt cancellation of the show. And we're sorry that we had to disappoint our fans. But um, personal issues came up and we were unable to do the show at the very last minute. And we do apologize for that. But we promise you, our special show, Love is in the Air, is coming up. Spiritual and paranormal experiences <coughs> like to interview you. Would you like to be featured on our show? More information on our website at www.cbezio.com. You also may contact us at cbezio at yahoo.com. Would you like to be a contributor or a sponsor of spiritual and paranormal experiences? Also, live readings with the psychic couple. You can... Um, Contact us at our website. Get more information at our website as well at www.cbezio.com. And our closing thoughts. Um, have you ever seen a fairy or a no? Yes. Yes. I'm looking at one right now. So ah! Am <laughs> so am I. Oh, no. I'm just joking. I see them every spring. They pop up all over lawns. No. I'm just joking. Those uh, are gnomes. No, I have never seen a gnome. I've definitely seen fairies. I've As seen in, both and trolls. Yes, uh, we could get into trolls. Will be a crypt, another cryptozoology type um, show. But um, I have seen fairies of the size of our niece caught one once. Yes, she did. And um, and our niece and our nephew used to play with the fairies in her house. And everybody thought they were imaginary friends until um, my sister decided to creep up on them to see what was going on, called them out and asked them who they were playing with. And she could still hear noise inside the place. And she thought somebody else was in there. And she went into the little house, tree house that they had. And there was nobody in there. And she could hear the fairies. My sister, who saw the little fairies that were the size of a thimble when I was little, actually saw one that was the size of about three feet tall. So they do come in various different sizes. Well, they can actually change their size. Yeah. So, yes, I do believe in um, spirit creatures. Folk yeah. creatures. Folk creatures, yes. I have seen them, and I believe in fae. Yes. And no, they weren't imaginary friends like a lot of people think that they were. Both you can, both me and my sister, unless we were having mass hallucin hallucinations, and we saw these fairies. Or I they, saw used these to, they used to show under the, under the violets and the um. The, Mine the, were they lived in the under the, the violets and the um the um, uh, what are they the clover? Yes. And one of the things that they had, I, I, I just remember, is they're saying they've got pointy ears. Their ears are bigger than ours. And show up because they listen to the vibrations. Any big sounds that vibrate, they, they, they flee. They get away. Like any flowers I had in the backyard. Mm -hmm. they, uh, at first, I thought they were hummingbirds. Mm. They used they, to flit around. They are um, beautiful. They have a very high Quite pitch. pretty. Huh? Quite pretty. Mm -hmm. Variety they of different glisten. colors. They yeah. glisten. Yeah, they do. Um, and mine. Fairies, lived, anyway. Yeah, the fairies. And mine lived, um, that I saw, lived under buttercups. And that might me and my sister saw. And um, me and my sister had several mass hallucinations when we were younger. Or, uh, I mean, spiritual and paranormal experiences together. As adults would say, Oh, they're just having, they're just having fun. They're just playing. Their imagination's gone wild. They're delusional and they are um, having a mass hallucination. No, they're real. All right, next time on Spiritual and Paranormal Experiences. I lost it. Crop circles, past lives, Mothman and the Jersey Devil are next in the Cryptozoology series. And it then Time Travelers and in the bible coming soon to spiritual and paranormal experiences spiritual and biological energies crystals sci-fi impacts portals and vortexes hopey 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 prophecies whoa 
Native American lore legends. Alien abduction. Alien implants. Haunted places. Bermuda Triangle and others. Lucifer and the Devil and Satan. Crypto. That's part of the cryptozoology series. No, it's not. Oh, uh, fairies part two. Is part of the cryptozoology. Okay. Things that go bump in the night. Introduction to age, ancient alien theory. Religion and the paranormal. Manipulation and time manipulators. And the sponsors are when Nick gets posted to the show. The sponsors and all of the links for the sponsors will be at the very bottom of the show. There's the psychic discoverer. I'm not going to go through all of it. The psychic couple. There Spiritual is, and paranormal experiences. There is the Church of Love and Light. There are Facebook groups. There are several Facebook groups. www The prayer request. We have hashtags in here. Sponsors for spiritual moments are like the truth seekers. The truth is out there. Seek it with the Truth Seekers Facebook page or the Facebook group Beyond Disillusion. Uh, sponsors for the paranormal. There's a paranormal group. Did you know that? Paranormal News. It is a Facebook group. Explore paranormal current events with paranormal news on Facebook page and Facebook group. And don't forget, you can always join us on Tuesdays with live psychic readings and the psychic couple at 860-866-4793. And that's 860-866-4793. My mind went completely blank, and I know that number, like the back of my hand, we've been using it for over a decade. 860-866-4793. And without further ado, our closing prayer. Closing Prayer is brought to you by the Church of Love and Light, Minister Chuck and Jen. Website is www.cbezio.com. Introducing a new way to add your name to our prayer chain. All is welcome. And the closing prayer will be read by Minister Jen. Close your eyes. Take a deep cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and listen to the sound of my voice. Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, guide us so that we can reach our destination safely. Help us to submit and rely on you. Direct our paths and give us the confidence to follow your direction. Help us to obey everything that you have taught us through your Son. May we thrive in all areas this week and be firmly rooted in your love. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ho, in peace. Ho, ho, Merry Christmas. Bye, Santa. Go in Thank peace. Thank you for coming. Oh, Go and, in peace. And be safe. You are loved. And next week, Chuck Bazile will be back. And I apologize if my sense of humor offended anybody in the studio or anybody listening today. What about I, me? I said anybody in the studio. Oh. I mean, you think I was talking about the psychic pups? Yeah. So Lee and Melody and Marie, they join us every single time. They start the show off with us. And no they're bad. too pooped a puppy now. Oh, they are pooping. Oh, uh, no. They are, they're sleeping. They're out cold. They're sleeping. They're sleeping. This has been Spiritual and Paranormal Experiences. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, suffering from a cold. Not COVID. Took a test. Um, see you next week. Be safe.